the defendant is charged in an information with attempted criminal contempt in the second degree and aggravated harassment for conduct which occurred on October 31st, 1999. It is alleged <coughs> that such conduct was in violation of an order of probation issued by a family court judge presiding over a domestic dispute action <coughs> between the defendant and his child's mother, the complaining witness. The defendant now moves to dismiss the charge of attempted criminal contempt in the second degree on the ground that it is defective within the meaning of the law. Specifically, the defendant argues that dismissal is required since this count fails to allege an essential element of the crime. Penal law, in pertinent part, <coughs> provides that a person is guilty of criminal contempt in the second degree when he or she engages in the following conduct intentional disobedience or resistance to the lawful process or other mandate of a court except in cases involving or growing out of labor disputes as defined by subdivision 2 of section 753 of the judiciary law. According to the defendant, neither the accusatory part nor the factual portion of the information allege that this case did not involve or grow out of a labor dispute, an essential element of the crime the people were required to plead and prove. There is support for the defendant's claim that the labor dispute language of Penal Law Section 215, an element of the crime, as the defendant notes, the Appellate Division, Third Department, has interpreted this language to be an element of the crime. This is based on the principle stated in People v. Colwell. Whenever a statute defining a crime contains an exception, that exception is an element of the crime. But when the exception is found outside the statute, the exception generally is a matter for the defendant to raise in defense, either under the general issue or by affirmative defense. See People v. Cohad, Supra, at 187, 331, New York Supplement 2nd, 416, 282, Northeastern Reports, 2nd, 312. Although the court does not disagree with the result reached in Kirkham, given the classes of provisions and the absence of any other appellate decisions, especially one from the second department appellate term or appellate division, this court is bound by the decision in Kirkham. See Substan versus Coach Lines, 102. Appellate Division 2nd, 663, 476, New York Supplement 2nd, 918, 2nd Department, 1994. Compare Duffy v. Horton Memorial Hospital, 66, New York 2nd, 473, 497, New York Supplement 2nd, 890, 488, Northeastern 2nd, 820. Nonetheless, since there is no second department case dealing with this issue, the court takes this time to write in order to express its view on the subject. First, although the rule stated in Cohud has been described as bright line law, see for example People v. Bingham, that statement is not entirely true. For example, that rule must yield to clear legislative intent to the contrary, as evidenced by the affirmative defenses contained in the Penal Law, Section 125 and 160, which, it should be noted, are denominated as exceptions but are not considered to be elements of the crimes that must be pleaded and proved by the people. As far as this case is concerned, a review of the legislative history underlying the inclusion of the labor language into the penal law demonstrates that it was not intended to be an element of the crime. The crime of criminal contempt was originally created by the legislature when the enactment of the penal law was done in 1881. See Laws 1881, Chapters 676, 680, 
Volume 3, Section 143. In 1909, the penal law was replaced by the former penal law, and the crime of criminal contempt was moved verbatim to former penal law, Section 600, Laws 1909, Chapter 88. This section reads in pertinent part as follows. That was fun. 